Okay, so let's write another program that's kind of the same as the first one, but maybe a little bit more realistic. Um, so here's my first program. I'm going to copy all of it, uh, create a new class. I'm going to call this second program. And I'm going to go inside, uh, select all, paste. I'm going to rename this instead of first. I'm going to call this second program. And when I compile it, it all compiles. Um, now what I want to do is I'm going to get rid of this. But instead of deleting it, because I kind of want it here for reference so you can see it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit forward slash forward slash, and that comments it out. Forward slash is this the slash that's paired with the question mark. So your pinky, move your pinky down to get it. This is basically what programmers use to comment their code. So if this is for one programmer to write a message to another programmer. This is the kind of thing that you use comments for. Okay. Um, and there's another way of commenting that's good for big paragraphs if you do slash asterisk two different styles of commenting. One is if you do slash slash then everything following that slash on that line is ignored by the compiler and if you have a slash uh, asterisk then the compiler ignores everything after that until it detects an asterisk slash so you can have multi-line comments like that and you can see that these extra asterisks are just inserted by by uh, Blue Jay to make it look nice. All right, this whole thing still compiles, and you don't have to have those asterisks. This is the beginning of the uh, comment. This is the end of it. So anyway, these are the two different kinds of uh, comments that you might find. In this case, all I'm doing is saying, hey, I don't want this code to count, but I don't want to delete it either because I might want to refer back to it or I might decide that I want to use it later. Okay, so Java is what we call an object-oriented programming language, which means that it's completely designed around the concept that you're going to make little tiny programming pieces, which we call objects. And those objects know how to plug into one another and behave in predefined ways. This time when we write our hello world program, what we're going to do is we're going to create a JFrame object, which is essentially a window. And we're going to create a JLabel object, which is a little label that knows how to plug into the JFrame and appear as text in the window. And it will say something like hello world or some other silly message. Okay, so this line of code creates a new JFrame object. It actually creates a new JFrame variable and the JFrame object that it points to. Um, I'm not going to get lost in the details right now because I just want you to see what Java code looks like. But this is the syntax for creating objects. I also want to create a J label. So you'll notice that my label has the exact same syntax that I have up here, right? I declare what kind of object I want and I have to write that here and here. I create a name for my label. I have the equal sign and I have this word new that I'll tell you about later. And then uh, open and close parentheses. Notice here I have these parentheses but I chose not to put anything inside. Uh, that's an option that frequently you'll have and in this case I decided not to put anything in here. In this case I did want to put something in here and you'll recognize that this is a string, a literal string. I have a quotation mark, Java is interpreting everything inside as human language and so it just copies these characters letter by letter. Um, and basically what anything that goes in the parentheses is being input into the new object. So this J label is receiving this string as input. And the idea is this string is going to be the text that this label represents. So in this line of code, what I'm doing is I'm taking the my window object, which we know is a J frame object, and I'm telling this my window to dot add. When we do use the dot, we're talking about something that belongs to this object. So add must be some action that is allowable by JFrame objects. So the my window object knows how to dot add. This has all been defined ahead of time by the Java creators. This is how you can go and attach a J label to a J frame. And more specifically, if you have any kind of an object variable here, you can call methods, that means execute actions, by using a period and then the name of that action, the name of that method. And then sometimes you can put other things in the parentheses, and in this case I'm putting the J label object into the parentheses. So we're telling the my window to go and add the my label object. So this is another command. In this case, I'm telling the my window object, the JFrame object, to go and set its size to 500 comma 200. And essentially, this is a command or a method that JFrame objects have. And it, the idea is this is how many pixels across the window should be. And this is how many pixels tall the window should be. So now I'm going to write another command. So this is another command that JFrames have. My window is the JFrame object. 
I'm telling the, J, the J frame to go and set its visibility to true, which means it is visible. True is a Java keyword. Its counterpart is false. All right, so you could set, if, you, if I said false, this would compile just fine, except that our window wouldn't be visible, and we don't want to start out with that. Notice that false turns blue also. Um, now, it looks like this is going to compile. However, when I click the compile button, JFrame gets highlighted. All right, now here's the deal. The library of things that the Java creators wrote is so big that it takes up too much memory, or at least we want to be efficient with our memory. So in Java, frequently what you have to do is, if you're using a class that somebody else wrote, what you need to do is import it. And this is like checking a book out of the library, okay? Uh, you're saying, hey, I need to, I forget how to make a JFrame. So you say, well, import the knowledge for JFrame. So I'm going into the Java X folder. I'm going inside that into the swing folder and I'm checking out the JFrame class. And now when I click compile, everything compiles just fine. So I'm going to close this out. I'm going to right click on second program. I'm going to run the main method and see what happens. This thing's going to pop up. Just always click OK. And sure enough, look at this. My boring little window popped up and it says this is my great label. So the JLabel was added. It was arbitrarily added on the left side and in the middle of the vertical area. Notice that there's no title here. Let's see if we can go add a title. It just so happens that the Java programmers allowed for the possibility of putting a string into the JFrame parentheses here. So if I say, hey, hey, is this my title? I'm going to compile. Notice it compiles, which means that the JFrame parentheses do allow for a string to be put in here. And if I compile, hit close, right click on second, run it, click OK. And sure enough, look up here at the uh, title bar of this window. It says, hey, is this my title? So you can set the title of a window by putting a string in the parentheses. Notice that this is a pre-made object, right? I didn't go and talk about, hey, how do I display a window? How do I write a little X button? How do I write a little, you know, maximize and minimize button? The Java developers did all that for us. It's a pre-made entity. Same thing with the J label. Its programming is already done for us. We're using the work of the people who came before us. And I'm taking this window and I'm adding the label object. So these two objects can interact. And this is the essence of object-oriented programming. And this is kind of the thing that we'll be doing all year long. You don't have to understand the details here. The goal of this video is just to get a general idea of what object-oriented programming looks like.